Hello everyone, it's Lauren. So in celebration of the spooky season, starting last year, I wanted to draw my characters in what they would wear as costumes for Halloween. And this year I made a zombie type of witch or maybe a Franken witch, whichever one you like, for my character Olivia Wren. As always, I'm also going to be diving into my thoughts about the design and explaining my process, as well as sprinkling in some self-analysis. So getting into it with my initial brainstorm. Most of it was done on Procreate because I've been watching a lot of movies lately and shows on my couch which means that I can't draw on my computer and so I just grab my iPad and I just start sketching. Unfortunately, when I do that, I can't record my hands and so I have to rely on the time lapse and I just hope that no one minds having to see the time lapse for the sketch. So last year I did a vampire, a witch, and a ghost. Also last year, I had wanted to do a zombie too or a Frankenstein's monster type of thing. But when I had attempted it, I struggled too much with it and I kind of gave up. And so this year I decided to tackle it again and I decided to do it with my OC Olivia Wren because her color scheme had already kind of matched the, uh, the theme of a Frankenstein type of thing. Because when you think Frankenstein, or at least when I think Frankenstein, I think some sort of green, cool toned skin and also purple and olivia's color scheme is already green and purple so i was like she's perfect and so going into it i thought it would be fairly easy but it was actually a little difficult because her hair is green which meant that i couldn't do much with green because it would clash with her hair color in this sketch i had also hovered over a scarecrow costume for her too but I just did not have enough time to develop this concept more. Even though I honestly really liked it, I thought it was really cute, but I just don't have enough time when juggling college and work and also, you know, drawing and making videos. So despite drawing this pretty cute, uh, more like a witch outfit actually, rather than scarecrow, I had to stick to the first concept and idea. And because the first sketch ended up being a time lapse, I'm just gonna include this sketch because I know people like to see it. Even though this is not gonna be the outfit I will be finalizing for the rest of the video. When I was messing around with this quote unquote scarecrow design, I'd actually made a mood board of scarecrow inspirations. But um, honestly, it was hard. There was a lot of like raggedy looking clothing because obviously that's what scarecrow wear. Um, even though that's what scarecrows look like, I, I didn't really want to commit to the raggedy look. And so I kept on gravitating towards like cuter, um, witchier type of outfits, despite literally having a mood board to reference. I was just scared to commit to it. I feel like I couldn't like make it look cute if I went with the raggedy look and like the torn up look with like straw and stuff. So when I kind of landed on an outfit that I like, she was just another witch. And in terms of personality, she's actually pretty similar to Sydney. She's just a little less bubbly than her. Last year, Sydney was a pumpkin witch. And when I started doing the colors for this design, I was like, wait, she kind of looks like a pumpkin witch too. And so I was thinking, okay, maybe this could be a thing. Maybe Olivia and Sydney could be pumpkin witches together. Since they're friends, they just had agreed to kind of do the same theme for Halloween so they could match. But once again, I just didn't have enough time to really mess around with the combinations that I could do with the colors. And uh, I wasn't fully satisfied with the one that I did in this video. And I was just feeling like I was running out of time. You know, I wanted to get this out before Halloween or at least on Halloween. And it just really makes me wish that I had more time. It felt like I was rushing with this design because of the combination of college and also just drawing in general and, you know, having to enjoy my free time. 
I even had an idea where I wanted to draw my characters uh, taking Polaroids together for Halloween in their costumes and posing and just having fun. But uh, once again, I just don't have time. I also wanted to do another vampire costume for another character named Sonny because she was originally a vampire, which I had changed about her design. And I was like, ooh, it would be cool to revisit um, her being a vampire this year. But um, once again, that will just have to wait until I have more time, possibly in November, even though it won't be in theme for this season anymore. Honestly, who cares, right? So now going back to that first idea and finalizing it. When I started lining this, I was actually worried that it would be one of those times where I just really hated lining a piece and that I would struggle with it a lot because lately I have been struggling to do line work. But it was honestly a fairly smooth process for lining. While doing this, I had to look back at my old Halloween art a lot just to remind myself how I did it. And I guess it worked because I ended up not stressing too much about the perfection of the line art. And I was able to do it a little messily because I wasn't bothered um, by how messy it was since I knew and constantly reminded myself that I was just going to clean it up during overpainting. And I wanted her expression to be... Uh, you know, creepy for this season and also because she's a zombie. But I think uh, once I started lining, the charm that her expression had from the sketch was kind of lost in the lining process. And that's the thing that's annoying about line art is that you, you just lose a lot of the charm that the sketch had and you, you've got to be a really good artist with a really good lining methods and understanding of line work in order to keep a lot of the charm that sketches have. Because unfortunately, that's what happens in lining is that everything gets cleaned up and then you realize that a lot of what you liked about the sketch was because of the messiness of it. And I found myself going back and forth and comparing why the sketch looked better than the, the lines. In the end, I just couldn't really pinpoint exactly what I did different. In the end, I think I tried my best to get that charm back. But with the final product, a part of me still prefers the expression on the sketch. And sometimes you just have to accept that sketches hit different and they have a charm that finished pieces will never have. Now, I'm going to be honest and vulnerable here for a moment and say that imposter syndrome kind of crept up on me when I was working on this. It gets difficult for me to call this a character design, since technically, if you think about it, it's more of a costume design or an outfit design than it is a character design, but I'm labeling it a character's design anyway. But call it whatever you want. I guess I just wanted to mention that a part of me is feeling insecure where I'm like, am I really a character designer or am I just an outfit designer? Am I really an outfit designer if I just take outfits from Pinterest and I slap them together? You know, it's like those thoughts that sometimes get to you and like, you know, make you doubt yourself. But hey, I'm not really trying to fill up a, a job application here. I'm not trying to check off on a list of requirements to to be a character designer. I'm just working for myself. I'm just drawing and having fun. And so I try to tell myself not to get too caught up in those types of thoughts because in, in the end, they're just really unhealthy and toxic. And being able to kind of swat them away when they come is self-improvement. And if you're having the same problem as me, I guess here's me reminding you that you're not alone in thinking that type of stuff and also that type of stuff shouldn't matter too much when you're just drawing for yourself. Because at the end of the day, whether you're a character designer or an illustrator or a graphic designer, you're still an artist. And being an artist is 
so much of an accomplishment by itself the fact that you have enough creativity and you're able to bring your ideas to life that's already impressive and you know give yourself a pat on the back we all have those negative thoughts and we'll get through them together yay inspirational speech done So you're going to see that the footage is going to skip from lining to coloring. There's a big gap of stuff I had to delete because the white balance was going wild. My screen would turn blue, sometimes orange, sometimes green, and it was just too jarring to see in a sped up video. So I had to cut all of that out. Luckily though, I managed to learn how to lock the white balance when recording the overpainting. So that problem has been solved from here on out. So I'm going to answer some questions that people had about this design. And the first one that stood out to me that I knew people would be asking about is why does she not have green skin or like gray skin like a zombie would? Specifically, the question was worded, why the skin no gray or green? And that is because green is just such a difficult color to work with. Her hair is green already, so so a lot of the skin colors that I was messing around with, light green, light blue, uh, like a pale green, a pale blue, they were really clashing with her hair color and I wasn't about to change her hair color because it's her uh, staple on her design when I made her. And so I was just getting really frustrated because I was like, how do I make her still feel like a zombie? But not give her green skin because it doesn't look good with her green hair but still make her look undead and like a corpse and eventually i just decided to skip the whole headache of it and just go with a pale uh, skin color that is very similar to her original skin color like i've said like a hundred times in this video i just didn't have enough time to really flesh out a lot of the colors and my god i couldn't explore a lot of what i wanted to do because i was like oh, i'm running out of time like what if i don't finish this before halloween i still have to edit the video blah 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 and so in the end she just ended up being like an undead witch with uh stitches on her body and stuff you know i like to think that when my characters are all dressing up for halloween her friends like sydney or isabella is just helping her draw the stitches on her skin and putting the makeup all over her body and you know just helping each other get into these costumes because putting costumes on is a lot of work Once I got to coloring, um, it was really all about trusting the process. In this stage, it's easy to feel like your drawing is too simple. And uh, to be fair, this is a, a fairly simple design compared to um, my past Halloween designs. But I was holding on to hope uh, that when I started overpainting, I could really bring in some pizzazz into this design and uh, learn to love it as much as I love my previous Halloween designs. Her face didn't turn out to be my favorite. I still like her expression in the sketch compared to how it is in the final piece. So some of these questions were repeated a lot, so I'm going to answer them all together since they're all pretty relevant to each other. A lot of people asked uh, what was the inspiration for this design and kind of where did it come from? Did it come from my 
imagination or specifically from some sort of inspiration. And the most asked question was how did I come up with a color scheme? How did I pick colors? How do you choose colors? A lot about the colors. And one asked about the stripes specifically and why I went with stripes. And I'll use that as a segue because the stripes were basically the entire foundation of this outfit slash design. If you weren't aware, Olivia's official outfit is, you know, her in green braids and she has this long sleeve, purple or blue long sleeve that is striped. And when I was looking for inspiration for this uh, Halloween costume in specific, I had seen this witchy dress, like the one she is wearing right now, but it had brown stripes. And I was like, oh, that is really cute and it would really match her. But what if I took the purple and black stripes from her original outfit and I combined it with this really cute dress? And that's exactly what I did. I basically found a cute dress, uh, I used it as inspiration or basically just took it and I slapped it onto her and I ran with it and I was like, uh, I guess it's not totally feeling like zombie, so let's just turn her into a witch. Plus the added on fact that her skin color was not green. I was like, okay, she's a witch now. Now with a color scheme, I basically just took her existing color scheme and I turned it into something Halloween. Her green hair comes from when I first drew her for the first time ever, back in 2015. I just drew her as a random portrait that I wanted to draw just from my mind. I was like, what if there's a girl with dark green hair and it's in braids and she's wearing a big hat? And then I started this tradition where I would redraw that green haired girl every year. And if I could find those pictures, I'll show them. I'll show, I guess, my improvement. And for the most part, I had been drawing her the same. But then last year when I redrew her, I really changed her design to fit the aesthetic that I was uh, currently building up with my art style. And with that redraw, I changed her hair from a dark forest green to uh, a kind of like a neon lime green. And when I was thinking about what to uh, color as her top, it had always been black or some, some type of black uh, in the old drawings. But I was like, okay, what's a complementary color for green? And I didn't want to choose red. Red is the basic complementary color for, for green. I'm like, I don't want to make her look like it's Christmas. And I had thought like, hey, like what about like eggplant? <laughs> because green and purple are technically complementary. They're on opposite sides of the color wheel. And so uh, purple looked really nice with the green. And actually when I first colored it, it was meant to be blue. But then when I printed it out, when I turned the artwork into a print, the CYMK turned that uh, blue into more of a purple color. Or was it the other way around? I don't remember, but either way, with her original design, I kind of switch around purple and blue for the stripes. And I essentially just took that from uh, her normal outfit, I guess, and I slapped it onto her Halloween, Halloween outfit. It's it honestly, now that I like, I hear myself say it, it's not that original and creative. Like I didn't even make a new color scheme for her for Halloween. I just stuck to the same one, but hey, it works because the color scheme already felt very Halloween-y already. I could have actually changed the purple stripes to blue. If you've seen my uh, last video when I drew her outfits on uh, traditional art, that's exactly what I did. I just drew two outfits, one with blue stripes and one with, um, the lavender type of purple stripes. And I asked in the comments which one uh, people liked better because I couldn't really choose. And it was pretty like equal, equal. I just felt like for Halloween, purple matched better because purple is a very witchy color. Whenever I think of a witch, uh, the first color I think of is purple for some reason. I don't really know why. I guess when I think of like a mystical sorceress magic, I think it's gonna look purple, probably not blue, more likely to, to be purple. And like when I think of a cauldron, it's uh, like the liquid inside is gonna be green or purple. So green and purple are just a really good like witch combination.
All right, so I am running out of things to talk about. I think I've answered um, all of the questions that were specifically about this design from Instagram. So I'm going to ask you guys questions since I like to ask these questions and read everyone's comments. Lately, I've been feeling a little like iffy about my recent videos. Um, you know, they haven't been getting a lot of views and when I watch them over, I'm just like, I feel like something is missing. I feel like the charm that my older videos had is missing from my new videos. And I can't exactly pinpoint what it is that, uh, I somehow dislike about my new videos. And uh, I understand that a lot of it is probably the mentality that I currently have because back then I was really just making videos for fun um, and it wasn't about work. But now YouTube is one of my main sources of income and if I take breaks, it feels like I'm doing something wrong. And so uh, a lot of times I have to kind of like force myself to record and do all this stuff. And uh, it's difficult to get out of that mentality, but I keep thinking like there has to be more other than it, it literally just being something mental for me. Uh, and so I wanted to ask you if uh, you have anything that you could suggest that I bring back from my old videos that you think I haven't been doing lately, like whether it be uh, editing style uh, or, or the way I film my videos or even the, the things that I talk about, um, let me know if you have any ideas or um, just comments about what I've been doing differently and what you wish I could go back to doing. I know that someone has already mentioned that uh, they wish that there was more parts that wasn't me talking. So uh, in this video, I tried to include more moments where it's just music and gaps in between me talking because I noticed that I did stop kind of doing that at one point, even though it's important for people to have a break from listening to me talk. Like, I understand. I need a break from listening to myself talk too. I'm also really curious about the editing style in particular, because when I edit these videos, I try to cut out the moments where I'm kind of just staring at my art or my hand is doing something other than uh, drawing. Like, um, I don't know, I'm gesturing and getting prepared to draw or random parts where I'm just kind of swinging my canvas around because I that's a habit that I have. You know, do you prefer if I actually cut that stuff out or do you prefer if uh, I keep the cuts to a minimum? Because uh, for the people who do watch, actively watch the video, I want the viewing experience to be as smooth as possible. Um, I don't want you to be watching me draw for three seconds and then the next three seconds are me just staring. You know, like I want it to all be active drawing, but if you prefer there to be less cuts, if the cuts themselves are jarring, let me know and I'll see what I can do about it. A part of me has also felt like uh, the draw with me style or uh, format has just been getting a little stale lately. Uh, I know a lot more people have been doing it and I'm happy for them, but I guess like sometimes when I decide the title of my video, I'm like, oh yay another draw with me and i'm just kind of like how do i like make this unique like a unique title but then i'm like oh but the algorithm wants to see draw with me in the title but then i'm like uh but what if i just made a video that wasn't a draw with me how rebellious or what you know who knows yeah um i read all the comments so feel free to let me know whatever is on your thoughts and um that is basically everything I have for this video. Here is the final design and time lapse. And if you've gotten this far in the video, thank you so much for watching and supporting me. And I hope you've enjoyed watching and listening to me ramble. So I'll see you next time. Goodbye.